In this video, I'm going to show you how to run sub workflows within a parent workflow so that you can iterate through lists and repeat the same tasks over as you go through a list. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have an AI agent and this AI agent does a couple things. It takes in a topic, it does a Google search on that topic, and then it uses that information to write a long form article. And if we run this agent, I'm going to go ahead and open up the draft agent and we're going to look for something like the future of space travel. We will notice in the debugger that we get back this Google uh, search here. So if I go back in the debugger, we get this as our Google search and the AI uh, model is using this in order to create its article. Now the problem with this is that this is the only information that we get. We get a title, we get this very short one line description, and we get a link. And that's really not enough information. What we actually want to be doing is scraping each of these individual URLs. So how do we do that? Well, one method could be to use AI to extract a single URL, and then you can uh, run a scrape URL block, and then you would do that for every single URL on this list individually. And that's something that's really hard to do because this list is going to be dynamic. It might not always have, you know, 27 different things. It might have 12, it might have three. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get when you run this Google search block. And so what we wanna do is we want a way to iterate through that list, that JSON list that we get back from Google search, and then we want to run the same pattern over and over and over and over until we've gone through every item in that list. So the way that we do that is by using a run workflow block. So here I have this original one, I've made a duplicate here called Y solution, and then I've also created uh, this uh, workflow here called scrape URL. And the scrape URL workflow is has a launch variable called URL, it is going to scrape that URL and then it's going to generate a summary of that content uh, in this JSON here. So if we look, we have some simple instructions and we have this output that gives us the URL, the summary of the content, a few takeaways and a few pulled quotes from uh, that particular website that we're scraping. And what we want to do is we want to run this uh, over and over and over. And so the way that we do that is by using a run workflow block. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new block in here. And we're gonna look for the run workflow block. And the run workflow block allows us to select a workflow that we'd like to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and select scrape URL. And then you'll see that we have different modes and we can run the workflow once. And this is useful if you're looking to simply like separate uh, items via different workflows, but really the run workflow block is better utilized when you have a pattern that needs to repeat like this scrape URL pattern here. And so we're gonna switch to run multiple times. Now this is gonna give us this section called iteration settings. And in iteration settings, we have a couple of different options. We have a way to extract those URLs specifically. So we can say auto extract, although you also have the ability to pass through an array of values or a JSON array and configure those. But we're gonna use auto extract for now. And then we can give it our input data. And in this case, the input data is that JSON that we get back from uh, the Google search and that's saved as the output variable search. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my input data of search. Then we can ask it to extract things from that input data. So in this case, remember what we're getting back is that JSON. And inside of that JSON, we see that we get a URL consistently off of every search result. So what I'm gonna do is in the extraction prompt, I'm just gonna say extract all URLs. That's all we need to do. Now, every time that this is run, we're gonna have an item called URL. And we can use that variable item to indicate the URL in this workflow. 
Um, we need to uh, save this as an output variable. So I'm just going to call this sources because it's going to be the information from all of our sources. And then you have this execution mode, which you can select to either run in parallel, meaning all at the same time, or sequential, meaning one by one by one. Typically, you'll want to run in parallel because this allows all of these workflows to run at the same time, and they're not really dependent on one another. You also have this error behavior. So this will be useful if there are some inconsistencies in your data. So for example, if this fails, you can just have it fail the workflow, or you can have it ignore the failed runs. And when we ignore the failed runs, that means if it fails, we're just gonna not worry about it and move on to the next run. I typically like this setting because there are times when you might have a huge list of, you know, 20, 30, 50 items. And if one of them fails, you don't want the whole workflow to fail. Um, and then you'll have these retry attempts. So if it fails, let's say you want to retry that step one time. We'll try that one more time. So then we have the parameters that we are passing through the workflow. And in this case, we want to pass the launch variable URL that we set up in this scrape URL flow. So you can see when you have a run workflow block, that workflow needs to have both launch variables and it also needs in the end block to have this JSON output variable. And what's happening here is we are passing a variable down into the sub workflow or var multiple variables down into the sub workflow, processing all of those things and then passing values back up, which we can name as new variables uh, when we get those uh, values back. Okay, so back in our solution flow, you can see I have my launch variable URL and the URL is coming from this extraction prompt. And so instead of saying URL, what we're gonna do is use this item. And the item is the value that is extracted via this extraction prompt. So I'm gonna just use the value item, or excuse me, the variable item. And then for our output variables, we get this um, summary uh, variable back. That's what we're passing from the scrape URL block. We're passing this summary uh, value back up. And then in the workflow, it's saved as an array to our output variable here. So we're going to get this big array of values back from the uh, the sub workflow because we're running this multiple times. So it just gets added to a big list. Okay, so now we have this all set up. Next thing we wanna do is just modify and make sure that our data is correct. So before we're running the search, and now we want to uh, pass through the sources instead of the search. So let's go ahead. Now that we have this run workflow set up, we can go ahead and set this as our entry workflow. And let's go ahead and see what the output is. So this is the original output. It says unable to complete the requested article. And uh, if we preview this, we should be able to uh, run this one more time in the draft agent. And let's say the future of space travel. And now this is going to run that sub workflow every time there's a URL in that list. So in this case, that's like 27 times. And if we look in the debugger, we can see that this new workflow is starting to run. We get those results back. And then as we scroll down the workflow, it will begin to run all of the sub workflows. So you can see here that it's kicked off several sub workflows and we can look in each individual sub workflow to see what's happening in the background. You can see that in the sub workflow, we're sending through the item, which is the URL we are extracting. So it's taking that URL, it's then scraping that URL and then uh, it's running that um, text generation block and passing back this output, this summary, which includes the URL, the content, our key takeaways, and our quotes. So every single time this runs, we get this back and it gets added to a big list that we're calling sources. So you can see this is done. We still have a few more left to run. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to when this is all finished and we can take a look at the end result. All right, we are back and the workflow has finished running. So let's quickly take a look at the debugger and then we'll look at the final output.
So you can see here that we have all of these sub workflows and it ran 27 times and each time what we're getting back is this uh, JSON output including the content, the takeaways, and the quotes. So when we look at that, that value gets passed back into the parent workflow. And you can see here, if we go down, we get this uh, massive uh, source back. We get this thing called sources. Um, and you can see here, if we look at the sources that are passed back by uh, opening up this variable here, you can see we get each source and this is all in one giant list. So we could use this for a bunch of different things. So for example, if we wanted to uh, display this information in a generate asset block, uh, we can do that. And now we have values that we're able to uh, bring into that HTML. Uh, for the purposes of this video, what we're doing is we're simply passing that scraped information uh, back to the parent workflow so that we can actually process it with AI here and have some more information that is factual that we can quote and cite in our long form article. And then here in our workflow, we get this nice long form article and each uh, piece has these footnotes and all of these footnotes can be tied back to the original source here, which we uh, link all of our sources here at the very bottom so that we can look at all of these links and where these are quoted. So that is how sub workflows work. The other thing I want to quickly talk about is this advanced mode. There are many uh, ways you can iterate through and you can do this exact same thing without using an extraction prompt. So if your data is relatively consistent, like it is with this Google search block, um, you can use this JSON array input. And that means rather than extracting the URLs and using item, we're going to use this advanced um, array input and we have the same search variable, but what we're going to do instead of uh, using item, we can consider the item as being one of the outputs, one of the things in the list from this workflow. So each of these things is considered an item. And if you watched our JSON video, you'll know that you can use dot notation to access different values inside of each um, object. So we can get the property URL from the item. And I like this a bit more because it's a bit more consistent. It doesn't rely on AI to extract those values. And so I wanted to show you this because I typically use this JSON array input. So instead of saying item, we're going to say item dot, and we're going to look at item dot URL so that we get this back. So if we go to the solution here, we can say in our variable item dot URL, and that will return the same value as the, the other method. It kind of depends its personal preference on how you like to work. I prefer to use the dot notation using this um, JSON array input uh, because I find that when the data is very structured and very clear, it's much easier to iterate through uh, this list. It, in, in my mind, for some reason, it's just easier to look at that uh, structure and know that this is the exact value that I'm extracting from this uh, JSON uh, array. So hopefully you learned something in this video. To summarize, you can utilize these sub workflows in order to iterate through these big lists. It allows you to create workflows like this scrape URL flow and use it as a component in a parent workflow. And that allows you to um, go through large amounts of structured data and do processing on just pieces of that structured data. So if you liked the video, don't forget to drop us a like, subscribe to our channel for more updates to Mind Studio. If you have questions, don't forget to leave a question in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.